Over his lengthy public career, Ehud Barak has served as Prime Minister of Israel, as its Defense Minister, Foreign Minister, and Military Chief of the General Staff. He's a long-standing supporter of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process and of the two-state solution. He's in New York tonight to speak to American supporters of those efforts. When I spoke with him earlier this evening, I began by asking how he sizes up relations between the Trump White House and Israel. I think it's close relationship, but Israel is still waiting for the Trump uh, program or plan for the uh, regional kind of uh, negotiation and for the um, how to move forward with the Palestinians. Uh, basically, the president made, uh, made an impact in the Middle East when he basically said, leave aside for the time being uh, nurturing democracy or dealing with human rights. Let's focus on fighting terror and cornering the Iranian hegemonic and nuclear intentions. That was his basic message to the Sunnite uh, moderate countries and to Israel. Well, let's take some of these issues one by one. I mean, the president, uh, the administration faces a deadline this weekend uh, in saying whether it does or doesn't want to see the U.S. embassy moved uh, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. What do you expect them to do and what do you think they should do? Look, uh, this deadline comes every half a year or probably every year. Uh, we as Israelis want to see uh, not just the American embassy, but all embassies in our capital in Jerusalem. And we would love to hear the president announce that that's what he's going to do. But for some reason, American presidents in the last 30 years always announced the, the good relationship with Israel, but never made a step. Let's wait and see. Well, we are, we are seeing some early reporting uh, uh, on the Associated Press that what this administration may do is simply say they recognize Jerusalem as the capital, but not yet move the embassy. Right. Uh, we know that it's the capital of Israel, uh, and it's always uh, good to hear it from other uh, nations, especially from America, which is the leading power on earth. But, uh, you know, it's the, the real test is ultimately in action, and we wait for the right time, and we, we hope it will be early, that the embassy will move to, to Jerusalem. I think it's proper. You mentioned a moment ago relations between the Israelis and the Palestinians. President Trump has said it's a priority of his. He's asked his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, to oversee this. Do you see any progress at all? Is it even doable? Uh, I cannot know. There is a lot of work done underneath the surface. Jason Greenblatt visited the area many times. Uh, Jared Kushner visited our neighbors. And Every Israeli and, and Palestinian and every neighboring leader had been addressed. Uh, the question is, at what stage they will provide a plan which has a chance to, to win the support, or at least to be uh, a, a starting po point for negotiation by both sides? That's still a question. As I understand, for anyone who talked to the Americans, they are serious about proposing such a plan, but let's wait and see. Another issue, of course, is the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, this has been a, an ongoing uh, issue for this administration. You have urged President Trump not to decertify uh, this deal, uh, and yet you yourself have long been a, a harsh critic of Iran. How do you explain that? Why should he not decertify? You know, I was very hawkish about Iran at the time, probably more hawkish than, than Bibi or, or anyone else in our government. It's a bad deal, no, no doubt about it. But uh, once the deal had been signed, it's a done deal. Even if America decertifies it or, or pulled, pulls out for it, the rest of the signatories are there. Iran might enjoy both, you know, both benefits and both the uh, legitimization to uh, break out when they decide to, based on the fact that America pulled out of it. So I don't think that it's helpful technically. I'm, I'm, I think that the Iranians are bad guys, and their plans are very bad, and a way should be found to tackle the, the Iranian challenge. But that's probably not the way, especially now when there is a need, uh, I believe, to drag uh, North Korea into a certain kind of uh, compliance probably backed right. by uh, China, Russia, and the United States. So it will be quite questionable once America pulled out or, or uh, questioned the Iran deal, how can you convince the North Koreans to enter a new one? Syria, 
Uh, General Barack, now that the war there is winding down with President Assad still very much uh, in power, influential roles being played by Russia and by Iran, how threatened should Israel be by a post-war Syria? We are worried by the Iranian possible deployment very close to our border in the Golan Heights and by their effort to establish a plant to produce a highly accurate missiles for, for Hezbollah uh, in Syria. We will do whatever it takes to stop them from developing uh, a kind of a advanced weaponry uh, plants in uh, Syria for the Hezbollah or move advanced technologies into the hands of Hezbollah, as well as we uh, keep the right to respond whenever anything happens on the Golan Heights initiated by the Iranians. We hope that the Russians, being basically a stabilizing a power now in, in Syria and in the region, uh, to take responsibility and to make sure that that uh, won't happen. But only time will tell. But, but just very quickly, Israel is more threatened by this Syria today than it was by Syria before the war? I don't think so. I think before the war, the combination of the Syrian army, the uh, some probably about 10 heavy divisions, uh, thousands of artillery pieces, many thousands of tanks, probably uh, thousands of uh, advanced uh, jets, uh, and especially uh, earlier, some 15 years ago, with Iraq, with some 30 or 40 divisions, this was a real threat. Nowadays, we are facing a different threat. It's mainly the missiles and rockets of the Hezbollah, probably in the future uh, missiles and rockets from, from Syria as well, and the activity along the border, which is uh, kind of a low-level terror, but something that can deteriorate very easily, as we saw in the past. So it's a different, uh, different uh, threat. We will never can underestimate any threat. We cannot afford to ignore any one of them. But in terms of military threat, the heavy divisions were probably a heavier threat. Former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak, thank you very much. Thank you, Judy.